Hey guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and welcome back to my video channel. Thanks so much for joining me for another video on the windmill.dev open source low code solution. This video isn't sponsored. This is just an open source software package that I came across that really interested me because it makes it easy to connect backend automation scripts that you develop in different languages like Bash or Python or Golang or other types of programming and automation languages, and you can connect a web-based user interface to those automation scripts, and you can also schedule them as well. I did an introductory video just last night that introduces Windmill and shows you some of the basic concepts around how Windmill actually works, but I wanted to actually dive into building a demo completely from scratch so that you can see how user interface elements for an application in Windmill connect to the backend automation scripts and can actually trigger actions. So we're going to take a look at this, but before we do, I wanted to point you over to my YouTube channel here. Please make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. You also see on my channel here that I have some playlists like open source software right here. I've got a PowerShell automation list of videos as well. I have an AWS list of videos that I created a number of years ago. And I'm also going to be adding in my windmill.dev as well as the recent LexD playlist into my channel here as well. You can also just go straight over to this playlists tab and find my publicly accessible playlists if they're not listed on my homepage. And then something else that's really interesting that you might not know about on YouTube is that there's actually this separate community tab where you can actually just create generic posts, very similar to social media platforms such as Twitter or Facebook. But one of the really cool capabilities of the community tab on YouTube is that you can post these quizzes. So I've been posting these quizzes that people can answer questions to right here. And you can actually learn, if you get the answer wrong, you can actually learn what the correct answer is and improve your knowledge about software such as LexD. Or in the future, I'll be adding some questions about Windmill as well and other open source software. So make sure that you check out that community tab and that you're subscribed to my channel so that YouTube actually shows you these quizzes as they are deployed to my channel on your home screen in the YouTube app. All right, so what we're going to be doing is exploring how to create an application from scratch. There is one feature that I wanted to specifically point out to you as well under the workspace settings, and this is the webhook feature. And what you can do is basically just plug in a URL where messages can be posted from your windmill server over to an external web service. And then those messages basically allow you to build an audit trail of what's happening inside of your workspaces. So if I was to connect this to an external URL, like this sample website here called webhook.site, I can actually see what's happening inside of my windmill server. So I could take this URL that's uniquely generated when you go out to webhook.site and plug that in and say set webhook. And then any time that I do something like create a new script here, and then maybe save a draft of that particular script, we can actually see those actions happening as messages that are getting posted to this external web service. You can see right down here, it says a new script was created inside of the Trevor workspace on my windmill server, and it has the name important script that was just automatically generated by windmill right here. And so this is a nice way to intercept those audit trail events and process them using whatever kind of logic you want to. So that's a really cool feature of Windmill here is the ability to kind of audit what's happening inside of the server. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete that sample script here. And for starters, we're just going to build a really basic application that doesn't use any external services. And then little, later on, we're going to take a look at an example that actually does do something like calling the Telegram API. I already have this sample script right here that can accept a Telegram channel and a message that you want to post. And then I built a really very... <laughs> painfully simple web user interface right here that allows me to send a message to a Telegram channel. As you can see right here, I got that little notification in my Telegram channel popping up right here. And so I can really just type in whatever message I want to. And just by doing this in Windmill, I've created a custom user interface for my Telegram. 
So what we'll do for starters is just create a new application here, and we're just going to add in a couple of components. So what we're going to do is accept a person's first name and a person's last name as separate fields, and then we're just going to join those together with a space in the middle so that you can read the person's full name. So for starters, what we're going to do is just add in a text element right here, and we'll make this the person's first name. So I'm going to edit the name of this element and call it txt first name. And then we're going to go ahead and duplicate this component, and we're going to call it something else. So I'm just going to do a control C and a control V that will duplicate the element. Then I can edit this and say txt last name. And then we also need to be able to plug in a button here so that we can click a button and actually perform an action. So I'm going to go back to the component list right here and we'll search for a button. And I'm just going to move that button right below these fields right here. And we are going to say over here on the configuration, we'll give it a label like get full name. And then for these text boxes right here, you can see that it still has the default text. So I'm going to select the text first name in the component list, and I'll just change the text to first name as the placeholder. And then for txt last name, I'll change it to last name as a placeholder. And then we can, of course, change those when we execute the program. Now, we also probably want to give our program some kind of title. So I'll just plug in another display text component. So this is not a text input. It's just going to display some text inside of our application here. And then I'm actually going to move that up to the top right here and then move txt last name down to the side. And then I'm going to move my button, my, I think it's uh, the A element. Let's give that a name like btn submit. And I'm going to move that down a level so that we can then move our text boxes over right here. So let's move text last name a little bit over. And then for the text box right up here, I'm just going to give that a TXT title. And we'll change the text of that to say, how about name getter? <laughs> Something like that, right? So now we have a little title for our app and we have a couple of input boxes and a button that will invoke the action. All right, so now that we have our basic UI here, we actually need to gather the first name and the last name when we click on this button and join them together and display them somewhere else, right? So I'm going to add in another text component to hold the results. So I'm going to choose another text component and we'll move that right down here below the button. And then the value of this text box here is going to be the result. So I'll do the txt results as the name of that element so that we can reference it later on. And I'm going to eliminate the default text just so that it's empty there and we won't see any text there. All right, so now we want to take the value of first name, join it to last name with a space in the middle when we click on this button and display it inside of txt result. So how do we do that? Well, we have to write a little bit of code. So what we're going to do is go to button submit right here. And as you can see on the right hand side, we have this event handler. So when we click on the button, what exactly do we want to happen? Well, we can define what happens by creating a script as a separate resource. And then we can select that script from our list of workspace scripts. So for now, I'm just going to save an initial draft of my application and give it a name. So I'll do app underscore name underscore getter, and I'll say gets person's full name from first and last names. All right, we'll save that initial draft right here. And now if we go back home, you can see that we have this app right here with the name you Trevor app name getter. And it's currently in draft mode because we've never deployed this application and made it accessible to other users. So what we want to do now is come up here and say, I want to create a new script, right? This script is going to execute some code when we click on the button to get the person's full name and join the first name and last name together. So I'll call this script name getter. And down here, I'll say retrieves person's full name from first and last name. 
And I'm going to go ahead and just use a really basic bash script for now. So I'm going to choose the language as bash. And I know that they're currently working on PowerShell support. So I'm really excited for that because being able to write PowerShell is just a lot easier. And then for the description and say this script backs the name getter app in windmill. All right, now another cool capability is that we have this thing called worker groups. So if we had certain workers in our infrastructure and we only wanted this script to run on certain workers, we could actually restrict that by tag here, but I don't currently have that set up here. So we're just gonna let it run on all of the workers inside of our windmill environment. All right, so how do we accept inputs to this script? Well, as you can see in the sample code right here, there's just a couple of variables declared, and they're referencing the input args to the script as $1 and $2. The second example here has a default value, but in our case, we're not going to accept any default values. We're just going to accept the input arguments, and we're going to rename these to first underscore name and last underscore name. So now you can see that those fields change right over here. So we can test out the script very easily. And so when we echo a result here, we could just substitute those variables, first name and last name. And then we can test out the script by doing something like Trevor Sullivan, do a test here. And as you can see, our result is hello, Trevor Sullivan. So the result that we want to echo out is actually just going to be first name and last name. So I'm just going to change the echo statement to remove the leading hello there. And that'll just leave us with first name space last name. And that's really the bulk of what our program is going to do. So if we retest this here, you can see that that gives us the desired result from this automation script. So now that we know that the script is working the way that we want it to, we can go ahead and deploy that script. And once again, we could test it out here again if we wanted to, but of course we already know that it's working here. But I could go ahead and just say something like Trevor Sullivan, or maybe I want to test with different inputs to make sure it works with different inputs. So I'll put in Ruben Fizel and do run right here. And as you can see, that works just fine as well. And I can see the full execution logs right here. Now with bash scripts, the last line of output is what's going to be fed as the result of this automation script back to the user interface. So the script could echo other logging lines, but only the last line of data is actually gonna be sent back to our windmill user interface. So just be aware of that as we're working with this. All right, so what we're gonna do now is go back to our application because we actually want to call that script from our application and then populate the results of that script into the text box that's below our button, right? So we're gonna go back to our app name getter and that's the little orange icon right here. That's our application. And then if it takes you into the preview of the application right here, what we can do is just hit edit right down here and that'll take us over to a screen where we can edit the configuration of our app right here. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and bind to get full name right here, we're going to say select a script or flow. We're going to go into our workspace scripts right here, and then we're going to look for our name getter script, which is the most recent one. So it's going to appear at the top of the list. And so now right down here, you can see our script preview right down here, and we can test things out by doing a preview of our application right up here. All right, so what we're going to do is go ahead and just do save draft. Let's go ahead and go into preview mode right here. And it looks like I didn't make these editable text fields for some reason. So let's go back over here and make sure that these are actually editable text fields. Let's do text input right here. And it kind of looks like it should be editable. So I'm not sure what's going on right there, but I'm just gonna go ahead and replace those with new fields here. So let me do txt first name on our first input box here. I'm going to go ahead and just delete the old one that we had there and then move this new box right down there and just give it a little bit of expansion there. And let's make sure that we rename it to txt first name. And then the same thing. I don't know why this happened here, but I guess I didn't do a text input. So we're just going to do the same thing for txt last name. All right, so let's get rid of this old one here that we don't need any longer. We'll move this one down expand it a little bit so it's bigger and then we'll go ahead and rename this to txt last name and txt first name right here i don't know i guess i didn't save that 
So now these should be typable. Let's go back to preview here. And yeah, now I can type my first and last names inside of there. And then we can click on the button there. But at the moment, when we click on that button, nothing is showing up in the text box right down here. So how do we get some text to actually show up? Well, the first thing that we want to do is actually make sure that we are getting the correct result right here. So inside of the editor interface, we can actually plug in some sample values. So as you can see, the result of txt first name and the result of txt last name are getting bound to this result. And if I click the button, what's actually happening right now is that these fields are not getting passed in to the automation script. So let's go back to our submit button. And over here on the right hand side, you'll see this runnable input section. Right now, the first name and last name values that are getting passed into our bash script are just empty static values. So we have to bind the text fields that we have right here to the inputs of our bash script. So to do that, we're going to click on button submit and we're going to say, I want to connect it to an element. We'll connect it to the txt first name element and grab the result property. And then same thing for the last name. We're going to bind it or connect it to the txt last name result. And then that will pass those values into our script. So now let's go ahead and do another save draft. We'll go to preview. We'll plug in Trevor Sullivan right here. We'll click on get full name. And then we can look at our debug runs here to see if it's actually executing. Let's go ahead and run it. For some reason, I'm not seeing my debug runs in there. So let's go over to our runs right here. Look at the most recent run. And as you can see, I am actually getting my name there. I'm not sure why it's not showing up under debug runs for some reason there, but we can always go to our run history and it should show up. All right, so let's go back to our app, go to edit right here. And now what we want to do is make sure that the result is actually getting sent over to this UI element called txt result. So how do we make sure that txt result is getting the value from executing that function? Well, if we take a look at the result of the button here, let's type in another name like TS right here and then click on the button. You can see that the result of the automation script that's running right here is actually getting assigned to the button itself as the button's result. So what we can do is go down to TXT result right here and you'll see that the data source for the actual text of this element is also bindable to other elements. So if we click on the little plug right here and then choose connect, we can actually select our button right here and then go into the result property right here. And that will bind the result from the automation script that gets bound to the button to this text field right here. So I think that's pretty much everything that we need to do. So what we'll do is just do save draft right here. And then we'll go into preview mode and we'll type a name like Ruben Bizel. We'll click on our get full name button. And as you can see, it displays it right here. So at this point, we've got a really basic application up and running. Granted, the application isn't really doing anything useful at this point, but it does give you a really basic example of how to bind user interface elements in your Windmill application to other automation script inputs, and then taking the result of that automation script and then feeding it into another user interface element. So this is kind of how we make things interactive in our Windmill applications. Now, to take things a step further, we could actually build a, an example that plugs in to an external service. And I'm going to keep this video kind of short right here. We're already at about 18, 19 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cut things off here. But we're going to do another video on my YouTube channel that actually talks about how to plug in to external APIs so that we can integrate with services like Telegram or Slack or Rocket Chat or external database platforms like PostgreSQL or My MongoDB and really take your automation scripts to the next level. Granted, windmill applications working just internally are pretty cool, but where things get really powerful is when you can start plugging into external APIs and automating external systems from windmill applications. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out the different quiz questions that I post on my YouTube channel here. You can also follow me on Twitter at PCGeek86 to get announcements, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.